Hi, it's Dr. Myers, and this assignment is going to require you to do uh, a couple of things with Fred. And I want to make sure that uh, you're okay. So I'm going to do two quick videos. I hope they're quick uh, to show you about this. Um, and, and most of this is in words in the document, but, but let's see if, if this helps. First off, I've reminded you before that you should have an account at Fred. Now, let's assume that you didn't do that and you don't have an account. So you need to go to my account and actually sign up. I'm signed in, so I can't show you exactly what that download looks like, but it is a free account. So you just have to give them your, you know, your email address or whatever is required. And you can create and save graphs. Notice I now have 110 graphs. So your account is where you can save things. And you may say, well, I'm only doing it for this assignment. I'm never going to do it again. But what if in the middle of the assignment, if something goes terribly wrong, you lose a couple of graphs and you have to redo it. So you're sitting there going, eh, no, I'll just take the zero or because I don't want to do all that work again. Well, if you save your graphs, you don't have to do the work again. You just go go back and grab them out of the archive. And that's actually pretty easy. Let me just show you that part before we get into the meat of this. So here's my graphs. Uh, there took a little bit of time to come up, but it tells you that it reminds you when you created it. I compared to 2001 and, and 2007 nine recessions uh, eight years ago. It's still there, uh, and I've got some categories and what have you. But let's go back to the uh, previous page. Nope, that didn't do it. I went back to the Fed's front page. There we go. This is the page you get when you type in fred.stlouisfed.org. Okay, so here, let's make a graph because that's what you have to do. And let's assume that you want to uh, graph uh, real GDP and M2, the money supply, uh, for whatever reason. We're just doing this as an example. Uh, but of course, when we do this, you'll, you'll see how this shows up and how you can do anything that you want. And I'm doing two graphs on this screen precisely because uh, that, that adds more value because now visually I can compare one graph to the other. It is horrible to say, I want to compare GDP and, M, and, and M2 and then give two separate graphs because our minds don't work that way. We can't visually put that together. I'd rather see a table if you're going to do that. But visually, if I want to compare these two, it's real easy. So it's going to require us to search the FRED data, or at least if you want these categories, these are trending search terms. So they're just simply things that people have looked at. And you can browse by other uh, categories. Like if, you, if you're a real geek like like me, you can you can um, browse by the release calendar or the release date, which means what came out today, what was the latest stuff, right? All right, so you can do that. But we said let's let's look at real GDP and M2. Now, as it turns out, if I hit one of these search terms, uh, I'm gonna it, it's automatically going to put in that search bar that real GDP. I could have typed that in, but you can't type real GDP and M2 uh, one at a time. So the first thing that came up was the real gross domestic product. It's in chain 2012 dollars. It's quarterly. That's how it's released. That's that's correct. And it's seasonally adjusted. And you always want that um, because seasonality factors, uh, things like, well, there's more people looking for jobs in June than in May because the schools just got let out, right? So that always goes up. There's always an increase in unemployment in June. But we take that out because we know in June, it's just students coming in, not to denigrate the students. It's just doesn't give us a view of what the labor force is because that's just a seasonal fluctuation. Thing, same thing about uh, workers coming in at Christmas time and, and taking temporary jobs and what have you. So you, you like to see the words seasonally adjusted and then annualized rate. And, and an annual rate just simply says, okay, it's it's uh, every quarter that this is released, it's not going to give me the quarterly GDP, what happened in that quarter. It's going to take what happened in that quarter and convert it as if that quarter was a full year. 
So I like this one. This one is going to go in. And again, you don't necessarily have to do everything I just read you through, but I want you to see all the information about this data is there. So I'm going to click on it. And what happens is automatically Fred will create that graph and it will create it for the maximum turn. Now, I don't really care going all the way back to 1947, but it might be useful to see it. I, I do notice a couple things. There's only two real downturns that I can see in the data. One is the Great Recession. That's what we call this 2007, 2009 period and the COVID recession, which is we see right here. So I might want to, you know, used to be easy just do 10 years um, here on and it would go back, but it's not long enough to see the last recession. So let's dial back. So I'm doing just down clicking, looking for when I want to start my series, when I want to end my series. And now we see real gross domestic product in all those uh, categories. And notice this is live, so I can, I can see it. It's really nice. Now, I could be done, but I'm not because I want to edit this graph. And you say, well, you just edited it with the date and, uh, dates. Well, of course you can do that. When I edit, I can change the units. Um, maybe what I want is, you know, the change, not the actual dollar amounts. And I'm just going to do that. I'm going to change back because that's not what I wanted to do. But if I do a change, it's going to recalculate the graph. Sometimes you have to wait a minute for it to uh, show up, depending on how fast your bandwidth is. And, and all of a sudden, I look at these changes and these deep recessionary change here in, in uh, the Great Recession, nowhere close to the deep change uh, here. I, I can also look at that change in percent change. Uh, this would be quarter to quarter because it's quarterly data, or I could look at change from a year ago. Let's look at the quarter to quarter changes. And the graph pretty much looks the same, but the uh, index out here, the X axis has turned into percentages. So GDP went down to 0.16% uh, in the fourth quarter of 2008, all right, just from the previous quarter. and in quarter two of 2020, it went down 8.9%. Now, I could do percent change um, in a compounded annualized rate. Again, graph is going to look the same. But when I go back down here, I'm going to see that GDP fell on an annualized rate of 31%. So here, here's what I, my message of all of that is is simply to tell you that you can make this graph do pretty much what you want in terms of answer to kind of question. Just be explicit in your text what it is that you're doing because the title always says real gross domestic product and it doesn't necessarily give away any transformations you did. Now, I want to add the money supply line. So I'm going to say add line. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type M2 and the first one comes up, it's discontinued. Uh, I don't really want a discontinued series. So I'm going to go down here and look at this one. And it's monthly data, not quarterly. That's okay. And it's seasonally adjusted. This looks like it might work. So I'm going to click on it and add data series. Now this will go back, uh, add the graph, and it will revert back to the maximum series length for that graph that we just added in, money supply. I don't want to go back that far. In fact, I want to return to uh, 2000 and, all right, so 2000, I'm, I'm Sorry, I got lost in the decade list. I had to choose a decade. I went 2007 January. So now I've got my two series uh, together. Now, what am I learning from this? I don't know. Uh, see, it's your story. 
you're taking the data and interpreting what you see uh, in light of something else. But I've got two series here that are traveling pretty much parallel over time, and they should because MV equals PT. Remember that formula? Well, what is MV? Well, money supply. M2 is a okay measure of M in that formula. V is velocity, which we don't have. And PQ is our real GDP, or our, our, our actually GDP. So we are close to that formula, so there ought to be a relationship, but certainly something happened. Let's look at five years. And, and we can see that there's there definitely some changing going on here. Okay, let's stop trying to figure out what this graph is uh, and what it represents. But let me show you one other thing. Sometimes you're going to put a graph on that is um, uh, not in the same units. Notice that both of these have an axis of billions of chain $2020 and billions of dollars, you know, for these two series in, in order. And, uh, and, 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 and what I want to do is I want to go over here to format. I have, I can form my line one, uh, something silly. I can change the color, right? So, I mean, if you insist, um, eh, pick a color green. So I can make it green. I can make the, the line bigger. I, I can do things like this if it just kind of pleases me or makes my story better. Or maybe the story is real domestic product and I want to make that really heavy and I want to make the money supply, which is sort of a, uh, a second one. Maybe I want to make that a dash line. All right, so, you know, I can do things like that. But the point is maybe these axes are so different from each other that what I want to do is measure money supply on the right hand side axes and now I get a better a better picture anyway let's assume that's a better picture let's stop with that uh, it's already 12 minutes let's get this thing into my word document so we can begin to to work on it so I'm going to close out this uh, formatting box over here and by the way Fred has a ton of videos I give you a link to that about how to do special things. If you wanted to, for instance, take the ratio of those two lines at every, any point, or at every point, it, it'll talk to you about how to do that. So what do I do here? First thing I do is gonna come down to account tools. I'm gonna to save my graph. I'm gonna give it a name. And in this case, I'm gonna name it junk. And the reason I name it junk is that's just a habit I have when I create things for examples or whatever that I don't want to keep. So sometime in the future, I may see a junk in my uh, uh, list of, of saved graphs and go, I can delete that. I don't have to open it. I don't have to look at it. I can delete it. So it's just my, my own personal thing. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want to share the link. And I'm going to do share the link. I'm going to get the page short URL, nothing else. I don't want the image. URL because the image URL is just going to show the picture and that's not fun and me as a teacher I can't go in and look and see what you did so page sort URL dialog box comes up I'm going to leave that radio button where it is I'm going to go over here hit the button at the end and I've copied it and it's in my clipboard okay what's my next step my next step is to go into a word document someplace here let me do a control enter some on a new page all right so a right click and paste it so there's my URL and you'll see why that's so important to have in the next video thank you